Hey guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to do energy analysis within Revit or energy optimization. Uh, anyways, the, these eco-friendly buildings are all the rage now so I thought it would be a good idea to show you what Revit has an offer as far as energy analysis and energy uh, optimization is concerned. Now we're going to be going over this first by showing you everything that Revit, Revit takes into consideration when, uh, when looking at the model as far as energy analysis is, is concerned. Then we're going to be creating an analytical energy model and then exporting that and uh, letting the cloud take over, do all of the analysis and then we're going to be analyzing those analysis and I'm actually going to show you how Revit gives you these cool uh, graphs which are not only great to make informative design decisions but also they make a good impression on your client if you're just showing your client why you decided to pay, put more windows on this facade and less windows on the other or maybe to your professor if you're still in school I think it's a, a good a graphical way of representing why certain things have to be in a certain way okay so that's what we're going to be going uh, over in this tutorial before I get into that just one quick thing I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial it helps me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm. Also, if you haven't already, I suggest you subscribe. I make useful Revit tutorials each week. I make multiple tutorials. Also, I make advanced courses which are uh, available on my Patreon. First link in the description of this video. There you can find over 30 courses so far. They are all over one hour long and they cover numerous Revit topics. Basically, the one hour format gives me uh, a bit more time to go in depth into certain advanced topics and explain uh, certain workflows or again as I said advanced topics within Revit and also there you can find all of my Revit project files like the file that I'm going to be using for this here tutorial. Now let's switch to my computer screen and let's take a look at the model that I'm going to be using. So here as you can see I have a model and by the way this is the model that's available on those advanced courses. I have a five hour course where I show you how to build this house with all of the project documentation that go along with it. But anyways, this is the house that I'm going to be using for uh, this tutorial. So here, before we can get into the uh, energy model and energy analysis, first let's look at some of the building elements and what do they have to on offer as far as all of the performance settings or energy performance settings. So let's take a look at here at the exterior wall. So this is a basic exterior wall, 37 centimeter is the thickness. And if I go here into edit type, here we can see some of the properties. And here if I scroll down, here we have some analytical properties and we have the thermal resistance, that's the important number, the R. Uh, and here this is that, uh, this is that number. So basically this number, as you can see, it's grayed out, so it's basically calculated through materials. So we have to go here into structure and now here we have all of the materials, so if we go maybe here into our thermal layer. Let's open that up. We have this polyurethane foam uh, material and all of these materials, when you go here on the thermal tab, you have all of those options. And actually here you can change some of these properties. As, as you can see, you can click and then edit those if you want. I suggest you don't do this unless you have specific information from the manufacturer. If not, I, I suggest you just leave these as is and then use default materials that come with Revit. If you have information from your or, uh, material supplier or material manufacturer then uh, input that information here for a more accurate uh, model. Okay so that covers walls basically it's the same thing with roofs if I select one of the oops uh, okay one of the roofs we have a basic sloped roof and here we have that same thermal resistance R this is the number and again that's calculated by here uh, again we have the same thing uh, we have that same polyurethane foam and here we have the same thermal info also not only that uh, but even like plywood sheeting has some sort of thermal properties so basically Revit is adding all of those layers up and giving you that uh, that final number number here if I just cancel out of this that final number here as analytical properties underneath uh, thermal resistance okay so that covers uh, walls and roofs which is pretty much uh, all of the building elements we also have floors same story just calculating all of the uh, all of the layers included but we also have some openings on our building so for example this building has these windows these uh, aluminium uh, windows now if I go here into edit type 
underneath analytical properties. Now we don't really have any information here. Uh, the reason for that is I made this family uh, for this project and I didn't really input any analytical information. But for our analysis, we knew, do need that information. So I'm just going to go here under analytical construction, open that menu up and basically here we can uh, put in what type of glazing or what type of a, a glass window this is. So here, for example, I can go for like double glazing, uh, quarter inch thick, uh, blue, green, low, e, whatever. So you basically uh, search for something that's closest to whatever your manufacturer is claiming for their window. And then you input that information here under analytical construction. And of course, hit apply. OK. And we have to do that for all of the windows. So here I have this small window. So I can <clears throat> do the same thing here. Let's go with the same one for each one. Now, of course, uh, this isn't a real building, so I don't really care that much about what I'm selecting here. But again, as I said, if you're doing this on an actual house, make sure you have correct uh, manufacturing information. Okay, but we don't only have uh, windows for openings, we also have doors. So here I have this door. This is the one that comes uh, with Revit, I think. Yeah, and here, if I scroll down underneath analytical properties, here the construction, as you can see, analytical construction is wooden. So Revit is just taking in that information. Of course, you can set it to something different like wood frame glass and something like that. Let's just leave it at wooden. Same thing here, we have a garage door. And if I go here into edit, uh, I can go to analytical properties and now construction is metal, just because it's a metal garage door, of course. Let's cancel out of that. And I think I have a few doors here. So let's select this one. And yeah, it's, uh, it's wood with glass, because as you can see, that's a door that has both wood and some glass on it. Okay, so that's uh, as far as all of the openings are concerned. Now, that's uh, basically where you input all of your information as far as your model is concerned. One more thing that's really important as far as energy analysis is the location of your building just due to all of the uh, just due to climate because climate is really important for uh, energy analysis. So, so to set that up, we need to go here to the analyze tab. And here on the analyze tab, we have our uh, project location and we just need to open that up and here uh, let's rev it find it okay so currently it's set to Boston uh, that's by default I'm going to leave it as is but here we have some uh, weather stations and you can just select one of the weather stations and hit OK just because Revit is going to be using that weather station to get uh, basically weather information for your location which uh, Revit is going to be using to perform all of the analysis. Okay so once our location has been set we need to do some energy settings so I suggest you go here to your energy settings dialog now here uh, for model, you can do this for your uh, building uh, model, like the one that we're using here, but you can also do this with uh, your, uh, just a simple mass. So if you only have, uh, <clears throat> If you only have mass, in-place massing, or something like that uh, for your building, you can use that. So then in that case, you would go with conceptual mass or with conceptual mass with building elements. Because we only have building elements here, I'm going to use that. And if you want to maybe a tutorial where I talk about massing and using conceptual masses for analysis, leave me a comment down below and I'll, I'll make that tutorial. Okay, anyways, let's go here with uh, building elements. The ground plane, we have to set that. I think I'm just going to leave it as is. The project phase is new construction, analytical uh, space. Now here, this is really important. Now here, analytical space, uh, before we go any further, let's talk about spaces and rooms. Now for this project, I actually had to make this uh, floor plan room diagram. And basically here, as you can see, we have all of the rooms. Now here I have one room that's just uh, an outside area and we can't have a room as an outside area, not for analytical purposes. So I will have to select that and delete that room. Okay, so we have a lot of these rooms left. Now, uh, before we can use these rooms for our analysis, what we need to do is just make sure we change some settings for rooms. So go here to architecture, go to room and area, open that uh, menu up and let's go with 
area and volume uh, computations and then change it from area only to areas and volumes okay because for our energy analysis we actually have to have room volumes not only areas moving on let's go here into one of the sections to view those rooms now here in this section you can't really see rooms that's why that's because by default Revit basically shows rooms only in floor plan views so in this case we need to ask Revit to show us rooms in a section view, so we do that just by changing our VG or visibility graphics override. So what you need to do is just go here to visibility graphics in the properties panel, open that up. So here we have that visibility graphics uh, overrides panel and just scroll to rooms. Okay, rooms, here we go. Open up the drop menu and here we have our uh, uh, basically color fill but let's open up rooms here completely hit ok and there we go we have our rooms and as you can see now they're covering pretty much the whole height of the room now here in this case it's not covering everything so you might want to like expand it just a little bit so it goes all the way here up to the corner okay so once we have all of these rooms set up with both areas and volumes we can go back to our let's go back to our 3d view yeah, go back to our analysis tab. <clears throat> Sorry, I have a bit of problems with uh, some allergies, so my voice is a bit off today. But anyways, let's go here and let's go back to energy settings. So uh, here I'm going to go to, and uh, now we have more information here just because we have all of those volumes. Now let's go here to other options and here uh, percentage glazing, we, well we don't really need that, but what we do need is building type, it's not an office, it's a single uh, family home, so let's check that. Building operation schedule, well it's going to be with people 24 7 so let's uh, add that and here we have the HVAC system now I'm just going to leave it uh, as is if you have more information on the uh, on your HVAC system that you're going to be using or for your heating ventilation and air conditioning system that's what HVAC stands for uh, then I suggest you input that information over here and yeah that's pretty much uh, everything that we need so I'm just going to hit ok ok again now what we need to do is go here and create an energy model. Now when you hit create energy model, you're going to get this dialog, you just go and create an energy model. And that energy model looks like this and it's loaded in, as you can see over here, as a new analytical space 3D view. It looks something like this and you have all of your rooms, so if you select one of the rooms, here it says, uh, okay, your area, your volume, your occupancy load, lighting load, power load, uh, all of that, but uh, this is only half of the process. So now you have all of this information here, but you actually want to get uh, further information and to do all of the other analysis in the cloud so for that you have to go here to generate and basically you're generating your uh, energy optimization analytical model and you're just uploading that to cloud so here you would use existing if you're using the existing file so you can ju just go with that and here you just say okay and basically it uploads your model to cloud and then uh, it will email you once it's finished and then you can open it up by going here to optimize so you click optimize and it opens it up in your uh, web browser now i already have that opened up and uh, let's go back a page okay this is what that will look like so as you can see this is the one that i've just uploaded but this is the previous one i had done when i was just testing these things out so it appears just like this it will open up this autodesk insight website where you can download all information and if you want to download information just go here to export and then you download it or you can click here and just open that up now here it gives you your use uh, and how much it's going to cost per year uh, to basically heat up this uh, space. And as you can see, this is the analytical model. You can actually kind of uh, go around in 3D, but the more, more important stuff is down below. So if I scroll down here, you have all of the tips and tricks and how to improve your building for optimized uh, energy or for energy optimization. And you can scroll down here and you can get more information on any of these so as you can see here you get uh, 
window shades stuff like that and here we have some uh, some information on this now this is really nice but you have to open it manually so what I did if I just minimize all of this here uh, I've downloaded that energy model and that comes as a uh, kind of compressed file like this so you, I've just uh, exported as this model and basically this folder is everything you get so you basically get these images so I can just go through these images and this is your complete energy model and you can show this to your client to your professor or just use it yourself to make uh, Im uh, improvements to your model and better design design decisions so that's uh, everything you need to know about energy analysis within Revit okay I hope this wasn't too complicated uh, uh, if it was or if you have any questions you can leave them in the comment section below also if you would like a further tutorial on how to do this uh, if you just have a building mass a building conceptual mass that would be cool and yeah that's pretty much it for uh, for this tutorial thank you for watching if you want those advanced courses first link in the description takes you to my patreon also there you can find all of these project files this project file that I used and all of the information that goes with it as well as all of my other Revit project files I have over 300 files so far. Okay, so that covers this uh, tutorial and I'll be back with another tutorial in a few days. Have a nice day.